Welcome back. Today is going to be an exciting episode. For today, I have received a package from Germany. Want to guess what it is? It is an ACA 500 plus, and we are going to do a unboxing, a preparation, installation, and we're going to try it out. So let's get started. Very nice professionally packaged box. I like that. Nice touch. Good job, Jens. And here is the card. I'll just place this off to the side for just a moment. And we have uh, some brief documentation, which, which I will actually go through. I'll point out, and it should come as no surprise uh, to those who are familiar with it, that there is no, there's no case for this. And I, and I was well aware of that. I'm, I'm not surprised either. Um, so you can purchase uh, an appropriate or proper case for this online or fabricate one yourself. But yeah, it, I'm not thrilled about that, but there's no option for it. So it is what it is. It had been discussed in a previous video that I had an accelerator card and did not have the original 68,000. This is a 68030. So if you're wondering from a processor perspective, if the installation of this ACA 500 is a downgrade, you're correct, right? It can be overclocked to 25 megahertz and even faster, but um, most will understand that uh, a 68,000 overclocked to 25 megahertz uh, is not the same as a uh, 68030 at 25 megahertz. They're not the same processor. They have uh, different instruction sets that make this one more efficient. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, long story short, it is a downgrade. However, uh, should I choose, there is a uh, bolt-on accelerator that can be added to the ACA 500 uh, to make it much faster beyond the scope of this video, right? But what I have to do right now is remove this and this is going to essentially leave me with no processor at all. Now I did talk to Jens about this and ask him if it is possible uh, to run the ACA 500 plus without this processor since it is using the one on the ACA 500 plus. And the answer is yes and no. I can, but I have to modify the board. What I decided was because I wanna leave this stock and make uh, the uh, upgrade a bolt on package, I've opted to put a 68,000 back in this computer, right? And make this computer entirely original. And I'm gonna do that now. What I have here is a brand new OEM 68,000 microprocessor. I'm gonna install it in this computer, and then I'm gonna hook up all the cables and we're gonna boot this off a of floppy just to make sure everything is functioning fine. I'll further note the detent marking the position of pin one on the board. There we go, this thing is now vanilla. Let me connect all the cables, we'll fire it up. It's a good sign. Looking for workbench. <laughs> Obviously if the processor was no good, we would not get this far. I'm gonna let it cook, I'm gonna let it boot, I'm gonna make sure everything's okay, and then I'm gonna proceed, but I'm not gonna record all that on video. I'm just gonna come back when I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with the CPU installation. I'm gonna shut it down, unplug all the cables, and proceed. Installation is somewhat uh, unceremonious. Again, I would have been happy to pay a little bit more uh, for a um, for a little bit more uh, coverage in the kit, right? But again, I'm I'm willing to accept that. There, the the, the sidecar is where it connects to, so I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to do this with the cover open so I can see what's going on here. Make sure I'm not hitting that metal shield. That would be the smart play. Okay, nice and clean. I just wanted to make sure because that metal shield comes awfully close. Didn't want it to break anything, but it's in there now. I'll put the cover back on. Now I'll read the instructions. I've read that far. Now I'll continue to read. I also have two CF cards and a CF card reader. I just want to point that out. They're not in frame yet because I haven't gotten that far. But uh, based on what I'm reading from the instructions, I seem to have done everything correctly. I haven't added the cards yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, 
turn it on. There's not there's nothing that basically says turn it on and then do this and check this and, and do that. The instructions don't really read like that. It basically says display module, D brick mode, memory. I I'm sure just to get there you're gonna have to add power. So power means firing up the unit. I'll fire it up, we'll see what happens. I I'm seeing something. Uh, there are definitely numbers flashing on the device, and yeah, look at that. We have to bring this camera in. So here's what I got on the screen, and, and obviously I see the menu, and I'm going to have to go through these configurations. I'm going to have to spend some time on this. I don't, I don't want to drag the movie out while I figure out what's going on. But I do know this much. I do know that you have the option to boot in a 3.1 or 1.3 kickstart. And I've been using in my movies 1.3 because I had no choice, right? But ultimately, I'm going to be using 3.1 with, with a newer version of Workbench, right? But I also know that what I'm going to want to do is get a, a, a fully working version of Workbench on one of those compact flash cards and then use the other compact flash card as a hot swappable card with the uh, Linux computer so I can install software on there, right? So that's basically what I want to do. And I see a boot ACI 500 plus in Workbench 3.1 installer configuration is, is what I'm staring at. And I'm also seeing the ROM configuration. I don't know what to do. Let me take a moment and, and really think about this. Okay, after reading the instructions, I figured out what I have to do. I shut it off and I install the uh, CF card. I have a two gig that I'm using as the, uh, as the boot card, the... Uh, DOS compatible one is an, is an 8 gig card, right? I think 2 gig is sufficient for the operating system. And I want to hit F7, right? And this is going to uh, take care of the uh, disks that I'm going to need for the installation. With this, we can see an instance of Workbench is booted and all six of the disks are there uh, because the compact flash card is installed physically. <clears throat> it sees it as a hard drive and now I can um, go through the regular hard drive installation process. Okay, so here we are. This is a good sign. Uh, the installation is completed. So I'm going to proceed. And a core dump. That was unexpected. E0 hexadecimal flashing on the device. It I'm going to restart it. I mean, the operation was completed. We'll, we'll see what happens. Hmm. Did not recover from that. There we go. Okay. Everything's just fine. I give it a soft reboot after that. So now that I have a, 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 a running version of Workbench on the boot card, I'm going to hit F1 and see if it actually boots off of it. Let's just try that now. And the boot light is flashing. That's a good sign. Let's see what we get. And it is going crazy. I like it. That was quick. We're only on 14 megahertz, but I mean, as far as throughput goes, I mean, that's a lot quicker than floppy. We are looking good. Let's open it up, see what we got. We got our RAM disk, right? So, I mean, there's not much to say about RAM disk, right? I've got two partitions here that I, that I saw. I believe this one was like 8 meg. No, 2 meg. Uh, there's 2 gig right here. 
and the workbench partition where the where the whole operating system sits right is just under uh six megabytes right and or it, there there's a lot free still yet right so you got uh, five f about six megs uh two in use so yeah it's a much smaller partition for the workbench i don't know if the workbench is a subset of work i can't be sure but now i could go in and do all sorts of configurations and what have you because this is now you know all set up for me but what i can do i know what i can do immediately if this is dos formatted and it allows for me uh hot swappable to simply drop this card in I don't know if it's going to limit the partition or if I have to repartition it. I don't know what, but uh, we're going to find out. So let me drop this in the auxiliary port right here. Let's see if anything magical happens. I'll close this so we can see. I see a light flashing and I got a, I got a disc. And it's showing, I, I guess, a four gig, which is the maximum amount that this can address. Right, that's just a, a limitation of the Amiga. So that's four gig right there. So what I may do is just uh, put a file in. I don't know if it, it, it it's formatted for four gig or, or what, because I know it's an eight gig card. So I'll have to see what's going on when I drop it in the Linux side, see what we got. But it did discover it and, and that's a good sign. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'll go back to Workbench because this is, this is really where I want to be right now. So I'm looking at the screen mode as the first preferences. I'm in the preferences section. I don't know what would happen if I switch to interlaced. I know that it would increase the resolution. I don't know what it would do. I could do use not save, uh, which would allow me to fall back. So let me click and see what happens. And it did work, actually. It, and it looks nice here. There's just a, a little bit of um, weirdness in some of the icons. But you can see that, yeah, yeah, so resolution has been improved for the workbench, so that's that's a positive. I could definitely go with that. We're gonna go through all we're gonna go through all the stuff. This is gonna take quite a while. Bear with me. I've added a PostScript printer. I don't know if, uh, you know, network connectivity comes down the pipe or, or we could go like a uh, parallel to USB or something like that. If PostScript is something that would work with a modern printer, I'm gonna have to inquire. Either way, I added the driver. I do hear the sound, uh, my monitor is low. Let me, let me see if I could raise that up. Yeah, that'll work. That's overscan support, that's nice. Again, PostScript set for parallel, uh, doing a whole lot of nothing right now, but I'm gonna say, okay for a future project. We were already in here for the screen mode. I'm gonna leave the time alone until I get that battery replaced. I got uh, this battery right here, that should be coming in in a couple of days. The um, CR2450 has not yet arrived. Mouse has a good sweep, so I'll leave that alone. We're gonna, we're gonna leave all this alone. Shows here board rate goes up way past 19.2 in this version. Uh, 1.3 only went up to 19.2. This goes up to almost uh, 32k board. Interesting. I'll go with that. You may want to increase the input buffer. I'm not going to do that though. There it is. 16 will be fine. Cool. I'll say that's a nice uh, quick view of preferences. I've given the uh, removable SD card an appropriate name. It had a random number, and this will make it easier to identify. I don't know why the icon hasn't turned into a hard drive, and I'll address that later. And the first program 
that I wanted to test this all out with was the uh, LHA dot RUN, the auto extractor for LHA. And all I did was I, I, I took that card, I put it over to the Linux side, which obviously it auto mounts as fat, right? And it sees it as 8,000, interestingly, even though this side sees it as 4,000, but I didn't have to repartition it in any way, right? So I just uh, dragged the file over, uh, unmounted it, put it right in here, and I can, uh, you know, I can do a directory, right? And the files are all there. So all I need to do is simply execute it on this card because there is a process for installing uh, LHA. And the way that I, I found the best way to do it is just to run it first, right? Locally on the card, right? So, so it'll auto extract and there are several different instances of it. And the generic one is LHA uh, 68K. And technically this is a 68,000. So basically what I did was I copied the LHA 68,000 to the actual uh, workbench uh, uh, folder, right? Uh, under C, but I saved it as LHA or renamed it as LHA once it was there. So if I go to workbench, right, the C directory, we can see that the file is here, LHA in the C directory. And that means in any directory that I'm in, I could just type in LHA and that command will execute. Like no worries at all from there, right? So I'm gonna go back to uh, the SD card, right? Because the other program that I had was the uh, sysinfo, right? So LHA um, x sysinfo dot LHA. And I've done this before already. I'm just re-demonstrating. So I'm going to do it for all, right? And it's going to re-extract it, right? Now, generally, I would be uh, uh, installing this on the workbench drive, but I didn't know exactly how this was going to turn out, and I didn't want to corrupt the workbench drive. So I did it on the SD card where I could simply destroy it and, and not care about it at all. So to test it out, I'm going to go to the SD card, and we can see because the structure is valid to support this uh, directory sysinfo and has all the stuff here, I could click on sysinfo, right? And now I can see these icons are generated for this. And here is the application itself, right? Which does like the cool thing when you click on it. So now I'm able to actually execute sysinfo. And this is like the, uh, you know, de, de facto uh, um, measuring tool in Amiga. At least this is the one that everybody seems to use to see how fast things are. So when I click on speed and it computes, as it does, we can see that I got, and uh, wait for my mouse to come back, we see I got an excellent rating, you know? And when I expand it, it outperformed the Amiga 1200 by, by a notable amount, right? So that's, that's pretty cool right there. So I'm happy with that performance. Remember, there's no, there's no accelerator. Uh, added on to this right now, and it's already doing pretty good. This could be overclocked again. I could get more performance, but you're never going to see this thing touch the 68030, even if if the uh, um, the clock speed is is increased and surpasses that, because you just can't compete with the 68030 with a 68000 unless you got you know one of those accelerator boards bolted onto here, right? So let me take a look at the memory, right? And this is just showing memory for those who are interested in memory. My camera's having a little trouble focusing. And there's, this is the memory information. This is on the ACA 500. I could see, uh, um, what is this about? Six megs. And uh, one meg. This last one was a uh, slow RAM. And this is chip RAM, it's 512K. And, and that's what I got. The boards, as shown, we can see that it's showing this Zorro board and the manufacturer is showing the website of uh, the company that we got it from, right? So that's cool. The drives, of course. This is the uh, compact flash auxiliary that I've named SD card. Take a look at the speed. We're seeing uh, two megabytes per second. I guess that's not bad for Amiga, right? some scuzzy information right there and pulling the information right off, off of the device but you see it still shows it to be uh, um, just under uh, 4 gig right even though it's an 8 gig card that's fine right so 
I have a floppy disk. I can't, I don't have anything in there, so that's all I'm going to say about that. HD zero. Let's take a look at the speed. Doing some reading. Again, two meg. You figure the throughput would still obviously be the same. SCSI device is going to show. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And then obviously, finally, HD one is our other partition. We don't need to look at the speed. And that's our, 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 two, another, our two gigabyte right there. So cool. And that's my uh, sysinfo right here. I'm pretty deep with that. And that would also be the first uh, piece of software that I've, in, or first and second piece of software that I installed. Uh, although I do need to move sysinfo appropriately into Workbench now that I know that everything is fine. So I'm gonna do that now. So I've copied uh, the sysinfo LHA into Workbench system. So I'm gonna go there now. Right, and I'm gonna take a look, and there it is. So, do a proper installation, and hopefully, there's a proper installation. We're gonna find out when it's done. I should be able to open up system. Obviously, I'm gonna have to change the size of this folder now, and that's fine. Yep, and there it is. So, I'm gonna open up system, and then I can see sysinfo and then execute it here from the workbench. Okay, cool, installed, done, that was painless. As I look through sysinfo in the top of the screen, I vaguely remember this computer having a fatter Agnes, so I can't imagine why I'm only getting half a meg of chip RAM. Between that and the uh, partitions, which I've orchestrated quite terribly, I think I'm gonna end the video here, uh, reinstall everything with a more ideal partition setup, and, and take a look at the hardware here, and try and figure out what's going on with this 512K of chip RAM, because this is less than ideal and needs to be corrected. So I'm gonna say thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.